Welcome back to 6-5 Summit. I'm Dave Nicholson, Chief Research Officer, and I'm here with a very special guest from Memory X, their CEO, Keith Cressing. Keith, how are you doing? Very good, Dave. How are you? Good, good. Welcome. I've been looking forward to this conversation. This is a very, very interesting area. Um, maybe some of our viewers have heard of this thing called AI. And uh, uh, there's a lot of work to be done in this space. And, and you folks are doing some really good work. Why don't you tell me about Memory X? You know, who are you? What's the problem you're trying to solve? Uh, in, my, in, my, in my Wharton classes that I teach, we like to ask the question of folks, what gives you the right to exist in the market? Fill yes. us in. Especially in the world of AI, where there's uh, so many different players, and uh, yeah, it's very hard to stand out or be different. And we are we are probably one of many, but let me tell you why we're we're different. So we're we're a, a startup founded at the University of Michigan, and we develop AI accelerators or AI hardware and the accompanying software that goes with it. And one of the major problems we hear we heard years ago when we started the company, we hear even today is how difficult it is to take new models, get them up and running with good power performance accuracy um, without a lot of heavy uh, engineering work. And so our goal is to provide best in class metrics out of the box without modifying the models, without anyone needing to know or understand our architecture. We just provide a set of tools and customers can use those tools to use existing models or port their own models um, and like I said, get it, get them up and running very quickly, uh, very low NRE and fast time to market. Okay. Not to be, uh, not to be cynical here, but, uh, but I've, I've heard this story before. <laughs> well, bye. <laughs> we're, really, we're really, because, because look, so, so, you know, uh, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, dubi I'm dubious about any, any claim that sounds like it's a, we do everything for everyone, uh, makes everything more delicious uh, and nutritious at the same time. So let's put, put some more, put some meat on the bone, prove this to yes. us. Yes. There's always suspicion. I had suspicion <laughs> before I joined the company and I can promise you every investor has the same suspicion. I think it's, it's whenever you develop hardware, it's easy, easy to say best, uh, best, po best performance, best performance per watt, uh, simplest to use and you're done. And, uh, yeah, uh, it definitely is good to dive a little bit more. So, so let me explain how we reduce the complexity a little bit on the software side and kind of how, how it's done. Um, first, you know, kind of bound the problem. So our focus is on inference, not training. So that's already bounds part of the problem. Um, our focus also actually right now is more on classical AI models as opposed to the latest model that comes out, you know, yesterday or the day before the day before. And we, we talk about Gen AI, we go to conferences, talk about Gen AI and generating new content and what's the latest chat bot. And there's a place for that in the data center, no doubt about it. But when we talk to embedded uh, platforms, uh, really folks are just getting to the point now where they're comfortable deploying computer vision centric models in their applications where they can trust it. Um, they, they have their own data, their data has been uh, fitted right for their sensors and they have their models and so applications like security or retail or industrial or manufacturing these sorts of customers are just now at the verge of deploying computer vision and that's that's basically what we're focused on so it's inference it's mostly computer vision although we're great with any streaming input um now let me let me explain maybe a couple of the technical areas which i'm sure is what you're looking for so first, we run the entire model on our hardware. So we don't go back and forth to the CPU, back and forth to a GPU, back and forth to a DSP. So that, again, simplifies things. So we connect to a host. The host just sends the data to be processed. And on our hardware is the entire model that does the processing. So there's no dependency, bus contention, you know, uh, memory burden, anything like that. Also, we did everything from the ground up. So we don't use a third party software. We don't use third party DSP. We didn't start with RISC-V, nothing against RISC-V, but we didn't start with any third party IP. It was literally build and design the state machines from the ground up. So we did that with every processing block. We have our own dedicated ISA uh, for our, specifically for AI operations. We don't have caches. We don't have prefetchers. Uh, we have a data flow architecture with at memory computing. 
and it really simplifies the hardware. We try to make the hardware as simple and and performant as possible and put the burden more on our own software tools like at the compiler layer. And uh, for example, ER hardware doesn't even have a NOC or a network on chip. It's a pure data flow uh, architecture at memory computing. And you add all these things together and it turns into a solution uh, that we can prove uh, that uh, is very, very quick uh, and easy to use. And, and like I said, at not the expense of accuracy and not at the expense of power performance metrics. So you, you alluded to a market segment that you're, that you're focused on, uh, vision systems specifically. I, I want to get to that in a moment, but um, I, I'm curious about, it's interesting because when you, when you describe what you do, it reminds me of an era when there was an argument, probably an argument that, that continues to this day. Uh, do we have our general purpose CPU? This is the argument of the past. Do everything. Um, or, or do we create maybe custom ASICs, FPGAs, you know, this is in the past, to do specific things very, very efficiently. Fast forward, 2024, correct me if I'm wrong, but this problem is even worse today. Because when you're talking about 1,000 watt or 2,000 watt GPUs, I imagine that those 1,000 watt or 2,000 watt GPUs can do some of the things that you do. They, they oh. certainly... Yeah. yeah, they certainly can. Yes. And 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 so uh, leading question, uh, do you need 3000 watts to do these things? Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> I think when uh, Moore's Law started to, to decline, you know, many, many years ago, uh, the realization was you have to do things at the architecture level and not the right. physical level. So so obviously multi-core CPUs, and that you have dedicated engines for each application, a dedicated engine for graphics, a dedicated engine for camera. And it makes all the sense in the world to have a dedicated engine for AI. And uh, in fact, GPUs are starting to add some dedicated AI engines as part of the of the GPU, right? But we're, we're very focused on uh, AI. We're very focused today on streaming inputs. And because of that, um, we can we can have a very optimized solution. So so something you can do on a, a GPU with hundreds of watts, uh, you can do on our system with single digit watts. And so we have a very clear value proposition. If someone needs to analyze, you know, twenty data streams or fifty video streams or something, they could they, you could even run it. Well, actually, you can't run it on a CPU. You could run it on a GPU for the most part. Uh, but we can do a side by side with the latest GPU, and you know there's an order of magnitude uh, uh, in efficiency and size and thermals uh, advantage to using a dedicated AI accelerator. So with that, with with that in mind, this idea that you're 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 targeting certain market segments where you can deliver efficiency specifically in a lot of different ways, not the least of which is power consumption. Kind of segment out the market. I, I think on the on one end. You've got data centers with nuclear power plants directly next to them. On the other end, you've got devices we we wear on our our you know on our wrists or we carry in our pockets. Um, where do you fit? And then tell me more about the about the vision systems that you alluded to earlier. Right. Yeah. So so it's it's important to separate uh, kind of system architecture and design point. So we have an architecture that's very efficient in terms of scale. So we can build something you know. Uh, for the high end, uh, for the low end, and all parts in between. We chose a design point with our current product that doesn't focus on saving every uh, microwatt, and it doesn't focus on getting the absolute best performance in a data center application. I think there's plenty of uh, mature vendors and even startups going in and cloud providers going after the data center. But on, on the edge platform, um, you know, single digit watts, uh, you know, something in an M.2 type form factor, or a USB you know, plug-in, that's really where we're focused. And there's a lot of existing and uh, new applications emerging that want to take advantage of AI, you know, things that people have never thought of before and embedded systems that now they can do with the help of AI. So from a power uh, standpoint, that's what we're focused on. Uh, from an application standpoint, what's really a sweet spot for us is there's you no know, hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of dumb cameras uh, out there in the world cameras that don't have intelligence built in and they're monitoring in retail or safety, you know, in a factory or, you know, lots of different, you know, street corners, lots of different scenarios. And in the vast majority of cases, 
that data is basically being saved for offline analysis. What we want to do is enable those cameras that are streaming information to become intelligent. And the way we do that is cameras are streamed into a central, you know, edge server. We can provide AI processing on that edge server for just, you know, a handful of watts and process, you know, 20, 50, 100, 500 data streams uh, by just using some of our M.2 cards. And, and then action can be taken. So AI can be used to figure out what to do at that intersection or what to do in terms of safety or if there's a security problem, as opposed to something happening and then pulling up the recording and doing an, an analysis after the fact. We want to enable kind of real-time capability, and uh, that's a really uh, a good sweet spot market for us. And then in the future, we'll be uh, expanding our portfolio, but you know, it makes sense to focus on a niche where you're really good to begin. So, so if I have a warehouse and I already have hundred cameras that are, you know, let's say I've had, I, I've, I've, I've put the system in, in the last five years. We're not talking about 50 year old CCTV, but something yeah. digital, a digital camera <laughs> system that's feeding into at this point, let's say it's all, it's just recording. So it's, yeah. it's just, you can take that data stream. And when we talk about the concepts like core and edge, and the internet of things, there's always a question about how far out do you push intelligence to the edge? You're saying in that scenario, you don't need to push your intelligence out into the camera device, but instead you can be in the server that, that, that those devices are feeding and the intelligence can live there. That's, that's exactly right. Okay. That's exactly I, I, know that, I know that might seem like an obvious point to make or, or to clarify, but I don't think that it is when some camera manufacturers are trying to push intelligence to the edge. Wait a minute. We already have cameras. <laughs> yeah. And, and many also send that data to the cloud to be analyzed. So it costs yeah. a lot of money in terms of communication. There's privacy issues. You lack control. So it's much, much better uh, to, do, uh, to do things locally if possible. And we'll enable companies to do that locally. So even even retail shops, you know, if you have a, 20 cameras in your retail shop and you have a lot of re retail shops in your city, you might have hundreds or thousands of cameras going to a central location. We can either be you know, at each store or at that central location um, running one or more AI models concurrently to analyze those data streams. And like I said, we partner with other uh, software vendors and then you have a real time action that can be taken depending on what the, what the customer wants to do. So on the subject of partnership, it sounds like that that's important from a go to market strategy. Um, there's a difference between monitoring activity on a dock where ships are coming in and out and monitoring activity in a retail environment or uh, or a traffic scenario. Uh, is that where, you know, where the rubber meets the road there? Is that your collaboration with partners that create those end user solutions? Absolutely. And there, there's a, a number of partners, you know, you have the, the company that builds the box that uh, accepts our hardware. Okay. That's probably the easy part. Um, but then there's companies that specialize in AI models for certain industries, customer, uh, uh, vendors that make certain customer facing dashboards so they can take action or integrate it into software in cities for smart city applications. And that's why for us, ease of use is so important because there's so many different applications. They're changing so fast. You want the ability to upgrade to the latest model seamlessly. We want to support a broad set of customers, but not have engineers that have to talk to each customer. We'd much rather provide them with a set of tools and get them up, up and running very quickly with high accuracy, with very, very low touch from us. And so that's that's why the link is there between kind of the market that we're going after and our product. Our product in terms of great metrics in uh, for streaming inputs because we're we're a pure data flow operation, but also the ease of use that's so extremely important that that you'd think other people would solve, um, but uh, it's a very difficult problem to solve. You can make it easier to use, but you normally need to give up on something else, you know, like accuracy. Yes. Well. I, uh, on behalf of uh, a grateful world, I'd like to thank you and the folks at, at MemoryX for not being distracted by the shiny object that is <laughs> chatbot generative AI at this point and really doing the block and tackle stuff that uh, that, that businesses need. Yeah, Gen, 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 AI is, 
Yeah. Gen AI is uh, certainly exciting and uh, there, there's a lot of good applications for that. But it, it's it's one thing to focus on, you know, the technology where the market is. Another thing to focus on the uh, the application of that technology. We're really focused on the application and the practical ramp of it. Keith Crescent, CEO of Memory <laughs> Memory X. Thanks for joining us here at the 6.5 Summit. Thank Dave you. Dave Nicholson for the rest of the crew. Stay tuned. More to come.